Sometimes when you're here
I can't lay down. You got me fighting sleep, fighting sleep. These walls go falling down. Cause the stars in your eyes and we're losing the night. I can't lay down. You got me fighting sleep, fighting sleep, fighting sleep. Hey, how you guys doing? Hopefully pretty well. So sorry I missed last week, or last Wednesday at least, for anybody that's watching. What up Frisco Mel? Oh, you got that Mexon deck air horn. Bow, 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 bow. I like that thing. Yeah, so last week I was on Mexon deck, right? So, I mean, I did a Saturday morning stream, but it was like pretty unannounced, sorry. I wanted to do it Friday night, I just didn't have time. I'd like work stuff that got in the way. But I'm back this week and ready to a stream. A stream. And I am excited for it. Tin foil man eating some pizza. I won't ask you to type too much, but what kind of pizza? I know you probably get them pizza fingers. Greasy. Frisco Melt, by the way, if you missed me last week, you could have watched the Mexon Deck interview, which those guys were super fun, and I drank on their stream because, you know, it's not my stream and I'm not building a board where I gotta, like, be on point. Yeah, E65 with Telios, sounds like it is, and this is a Polycarb one. So a couple weeks ago, we built a um, an Alu one, and it was great. Um... But I'm really liking the way this one looks. I just opened it up and took a look a minute ago. So before letting it get all crazy, I'll actually bust this guy out and we can take a look at it. Oh, no, it's not vintage. I'll, I'll go on. I'll talk about this one first. This is actually Tai Hao. Um, so not vintage and not super amazing or anything. Um, although I really do like it actually. So it's Tai Hao Dolch. It's two sets of Tai Hao Dolch, right? They do the regular Dolch and then they do a red Dolch. So I bought the red Dolch set just for these <laughs> accents. Um, but this is the Alps version and this has blue Alps in it. So vintage switches, but modern, modern keycaps. Anyway, um, here we go. Whoosh. Yeah, that was a cool build. That was one of my earlier builds, this board. Um, I'm going to do some Alps stuff coming up. Um, I'm going to do... I'm going to rebuild a 60% board that I have. Um, a purple 5 degree. 
it has orange alps in it it's gonna end up with black alps probably because i have a ton um so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna rebuild again my um my salamander because i want its brown alps because that board is not premium enough to get all my brown alps i mean i have more but i want to do a couple different brown alps boards later uh, Kepler, whenever that comes, will be Brown Alps, HBCP, the Polycarb one. I still haven't decided 100% what I'm going to do. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about doing Brown Alps, but there's a possibility I'll do like NOS White Alps because I have some NOS White Alps, like truly NOS, never soldered before. Um, so I'm contemplating doing that. I, I don't know, our Ambers maybe even. I'm, I'm in between ideas for that one um however let's unbox this uh this clearly was unboxed once before unlike the last one that we built customer had it sent from exclusive to me so this one we're gonna build it with telios and some zeal stabs we're gonna use we're gonna do a 7u layout which um if I'm, I'm being wrong. There's a couple different 7U layouts, uh, but one of them, yeah, I don't know. I'm not 100% on which the customer wants. I'll look through our Discord if he called it out. If he doesn't, I'm, I'm sure of which one I would want, or which one I would choose for him. Mm -mm. Reminder, yep. <laughs> uh, seven space yard. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so he wants a specific layout. Okay, yeah. So this will be real straightforward. Customer wants a uh, 1.5 U. Well, so from left to right, it'll be, I'll pull the board out and then we can talk about it. Oh, neat, OPE, Centrac finally got back to you. He has the stuff, he said he'll ship, ship it Thursday. The problem is he said that, he said last Thursday. Still no shipping label. Uh, yeah, man, I ordered stuff from Centrac once before and it was bad, it was bad news. I will always steer customers I won't steer them away I mean if that's the board you want that's the board you want but I will recommend they do something else when at all possible um, yeah so basically what customer wants is 1.5 1 1.5 1 7 1.5 1 and then the rest is antsy straight up 65% antsy um yarp uh this would be the last time you do i mean if you end up getting the thing and you like what you get i mean it's hard to say no but i actually ordered something from them paid um the money on behalf of a customer so this was for a customer build right paid the money and that uh, doesn't go in there and they didn't ship and i had to contact them like hey what's going on with this and then they were like oh crap we didn't have that color we have this other color or this one it's like well we ordered this one and then we had to make a new choice and in the end we ended up going away from centrac they did refund though after bugging them a couple times sorry man i i wish that i could say that it was going to work out well for you with them and I hope that it does I just I, I would never recommend them to anyone at this point because of the issues that I've experienced so customer did not include the gloves in his and he has the polished PVD plate so I'm gonna try not to get fingerprints all over it and wipe it down before I put switches in but it's really not a hundred percent possible and he does definitely want me to try and not get fingerprints on it. So I'll, I'll go wash my hands again after we've lubed the stabs and stuff, but 
there's like legit no way to 100% never get any fingerprints on on the board, unfortunately. I also don't have the bump ons. Like they were not included in the box, as far as I can tell. Unless they're in with the gasket. No, not with the screws. So just no. Okay, fair. Now we know where we are. Um, I'm gonna set this stuff over here because the gasket goes on last. Um, what up, Jax, dude? Hey, man. Hopefully everything's going well with Rukia and with you in general, of course. But I saw some traffic from you earlier, and I in the Discord, and I've been really bad about Discord the last two days because I've been trapped in a place where I have literally no reception all day at work for both yesterday and today. And so my attention span has been real low to it. I read some traffic about what's going on and kind of stopped, but I hope everything goes really well, man. Uh, Black Gat inks in polycarb sounds like nuts. Like actually better than cherry. Never thought you'd say that. Uh, why? Gat inks are great, man. I mean, if I'm being real, like, creams have an amazing sound. Um, Gat inks have a good sound. Um, Holy Pandas have a good sound. I probably would not target any of those for my own builds. But if I were going to choose one of those, well, it'd be Holy Pandas. <laughs> what up, BBB? How you doing? Um, uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, false fails. It's not a par. Then I'll ask for a refund and order a tofu or something. Yeah, so the tofu acrylic is good. Um... Uh, or a regular tofu or whatever. Honestly, tinfoil, man, if you're... Hmm. Yeah, you should hit me up sometime. We'll, we'll have a chat on Discord or something. I'm sure there's other options out there that are really good. This is a beautiful freaking board. It really is. And it looks better in polycarp straight up than it did in alu. I don't like the weight as much, although I think we weighed the... I think we weighed the other one, so I'm curious to see what this one weighs to do a comparison. Yeah, dude, it's... I'm sorry, man, that really sucks. It really, really does. It's effing garbage. Um, okay, so we're gonna pull this plate out of here. Oh yeah, that's right, it has these tiny, itty, bitty, freaking... Um... Which ones? I think the back ones were bigger, right? And the back ones were two? No. Okay. 1.5. Oof. Whoa, all 1.5s. Okay. 1.5 millimeter hex it is. But I do believe they were different sizes. Um, What color was the alu board? Uh, I will let you know. It's okay because I want to look up what the um, weight was also. And I think I said something about it at the end. Or I posted it in the description or something. Yeah, a week ago. Please don't say words. Um, like, I don't want the sound to come through. Hey, pineapples. Pineapples. <laughs> Thanks for <laughs> thanks for the follow, man. I appreciate it. Also, I like the name. Um, yeah, so I didn't say how much it weighs, unfortunately. Uh, it was gray. It was gray, and we put modern dolch on it. That is what it was. Womp womp. All right, anyway, um, here I go. Here I go. This polycarb. I don't know, man. I, I'm digging polycarb boards right now. Ugh, don't scratch. Sorry. I don't want to, like, grab it because it's polycarb and I didn't want the actual screw to scratch anything. 
Um, I think it looked good. It's just the polycarb looks really good. And I, there's something about it. Like, I don't have any polycarbonate boards of my own right now. Zero. But I have, like, more than one that I'm waiting for. <laughs> uh, so, Rukia and... Um, and uh, KBD 8X Mark II. And there's some more than two. And uh, HBCP. <laughs> I got the purple polycarb with that one, though. Um, and I don't have DMG, which is unfortunate. So I have three polycarb boards that I'm waiting on right now. Okay. So great. That comes out. That's beautiful. So we will not use that. Yeah, we will use this. Um Yeah, so I don't know why I just decided to jump in on a bunch of polycarb boards um, specifically. I think it just played out that way. But for me, like with HBCP, it was a no brainer. I love the proto. Um, I love the layout, of course. And um, that he offered atomic purple, right? So it was like, just go for it. Um, now with Rukia, I think when I jumped in on Rukia, was either right around or right after, right, Jax? The time where you were like, it's gonna be polycarb or whatever. I jumped in pretty early. Um, but either way, like it was supposed to be originally ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, which I'm super into as a material, just in general. I've always loved that material. Um, and I really wanna have a board out of it. But the funny thing is, is I'm way more about a board which Jax doesn't have any um, immediately serious designs in terms of like immediate production run, right? Which is Irma, which is TKL. But how can you pass up on a polycarbonate Alice or ultra high molecular weight polyethylene that's done that's going to be done in high quality and by somebody who's a pretty decent guy, honestly? Every time I talk to Jax, he just seems like a nice guy. And I want him to succeed. So I jumped in on it and a bunch of other people did and it's gonna be wildly successful, I'm sure. He's posted images, it looks great. Um, so life is good, man. I've been busy the last couple days, BBB, but life is pretty good. Oh, you were asking tinfoil, that's right. Um, yeah. So, anyway, anyway. We're just gonna set this bad boy off to the side. Why is that not coming out? Is one of the screws still in? Oh, it's just tight. So the PVD is not perfect on this. I wanna start with that. I see some blemishes. Um, it's easy though for there to be blemishes, yeah. So it's polycarbonate, that's why it's tight. Because flex. So yeah, it's not perfect. I definitely see blems. Not major ones, but little speckles. Where it's not, it's way noticeable on the back, all over the back. You can see them there. Those aren't dirt like right next to the bright area. There are actually like speckles in the PVD. They're kind of spotting all over it. And then on the top, you can see them too. So if you buy a, P a polished PVD thing, you need to be pretty, um, you need to be pretty cognizant of the fact that it's not gonna be flawless at this point. Like it's gonna have some immediately noticeable character. Hopefully you guys could hear that while I was talking about that. But it just will. Um, 
Martakia, what up? How you doing? Question extends to me. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Life is good, man. That's that's I answered. Life is good. I've been doing things at work. I'm gonna be going to I'm gonna miss not this coming week's stream, but the one after that, because I'll be in Vegas. I'm trying to like I'm contemplating like, can I just bring a computer with me? Because I'll be driving. Can I because I'm close enough? Like, should I just bring a system with me and try and do a board build while I'm in Vegas? I think it's ambitious. I'll be there with coworkers. I think it's a bad plan to try. Um, so I'll probably end up skipping it and making it up on a weekend stream. But next week, we'll be here at the regular time. And next week, what are we going to build? Um... I have some stuff that's lined up that's arrived, but not perfect. So it's possible we will rebuild the Duck Unicorn X Legend that we built this last week, or Saturday, because PCB's underglow is busted. And I tried reflowing a bunch of likely culprits and couldn't get it to work. So it's possible one of the actual LEDs is trashed, which would be best case scenario. It's possible one of the MOSFETs is bad. Like, I wasn't getting voltage where I expected it to, and I plugged it in and made sure it was configured right, which is a pain with that board, because um, snow till sucks, but whatever. Uh, on one hand, get your coworkers hooked if you do. On the other hand, lots of equipment to lug around. Uh, it's not a ton of equipment, it's just... It's just honestly... I don't know if timelines will line up and everything will work out perfect for that to happen. It's easier just to say I'm not going to do it and make it at a different time and commit to that, which is something that I can achieve, right? Because I don't want you guys to be left out in the cold. I like it that I have regular viewers and you guys come visit me. It's the best. Thank you, guys. Absolutely thank you, guys. Okay, so we're doing a 7U... 7U space bar. So let me get out a bunch of stuff to lube. I'm just gonna get this out now. <laughs> All right, so we'll pull this bad boy out. Get this, and we'll get to a lube. In. Yeah, like it would be cool to get some of my coworkers in, but the coworkers that I'm going with, I'm not gonna get in to mechanical keyboards. Like, uh, one of them is my boss, who's super cool, but is, uh, like, I don't know, I don't wanna call him out. Maybe he'll watch one day. I'll, actually, he knows exactly. He would say that he is an extremely cheap dude. Um, like, high-end cubes would not be in his territory. Um, absolutely not the kind of guy who's going to go spend a ton of money on um, keyboards. Like, just simply not. <laughs> um, what do we got? We got one, two, three, four stabilized switches. That's right. Okay, cool. Easy peasy. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's what I thought. Sweet. Yeah, so th there's no way. And then one of the other people is, um, well, she wouldn't, she wouldn't be into it either. Basically, none of them would be into it. <laughs> <coughs> like one of them, I'm pretty sure doesn't use computers for fun at all in any meaningful way. She, it's not like her hobby, so. She, uh, she uses a computer at work and stuff and mostly probably just doesn't interact with computers in her regular life that much. Um, but, <clears throat> whatever, man, teach their own. I do have people that I used to work with who are into keyboards, like shocks you've seen on stream, right? And, uh, we built his we rebuilt his Kodachi, which was a giant pain in the ass. Tex Kodachi. Mm, looks cool, don't buy it. Not a good keyboard. I mean, I guess if you're hooked on having a track point, 
then it's probably one of your only decent options. So in that case, you know, I mean, do it, do what you must. But generally speaking, don't do it. Don't. Um, yeah, man. So do I have to clip zeal stabs? You do not clip zeal stabs. Um, there's modding. All right, we're going to lube them, but you don't, uh, you don't clip zeal stabs. They have a plastic bit on the bottom. The way they're actually injection molded. Whoop, there we go. So the way they're injection molded does not require. And if you hold on one sec, I will pull out our GMK one and show you. I mean, that is GMK, but I don't want to pull that one out because it was previously lubed, so I don't want to pull it apart. All right, so on a GMK or Cherry style other than Zeal. Oh, these are, uh, I clipped all these. <laughs> Already clipped. Okay, well, I'll get those, I'll get some for you. Because I actually want you guys to see them. It's kind of uh, important. Here, these ones look like they're completely new and untouched. Yeah, they are. So I have some that I previously clipped and some of them are just like brand new, right? So I'll show you kind of what the difference is, right? So if you look on these, right, they're flat on the bottom. They have one kind of bigger foot on this side and two little feet that come straight out the back and don't tip down at all. Whereas on this, you've got the four feet, two go straight out and then the two come out and have the little tine that sticks up on them. And that's the part that you're clipping off. So absolutely, you do not need to um, clip zeal stabs. But like I said, you do lube them. Um, well, I mean, we are lubing them. It would be weird if a customer bought zeal stabs and didn't want them lubed. In fact, I, I don't know. I generally don't deal with a lot of customer builds who don't want lube stabs. I, uh, if I was going to convince one custom or a customer to do any one thing, like if they were going to choose like crap board parts, they, they just wanted something simple. They're brand new to the hobby, whatever. Um, if there was going to be one thing that I was like, you need to have this done. You, you actually need to do this. It will improve the quality of your board the most. It would absolutely be lubricating steps. Um, has anyone tried hybridizing stabs? Um, I have used parts from more than one stabilizer set before when a customer's build, when a customer failed to supply the correct wire. So I took a GMK wire um, and used it in a zeal on a zeal stab. Uh, they were in the chat though. They agreed to it. It's it was nothing, no drama there, you know. But I was like, hey, you wanted uh, you just sent me this layout today, but you sent me stabs that weren't appropriate for this, and I didn't have a backup because they wanted six two five, and I don't usually have a lot of six point two five zeal stabs. I usually have an extra um, 7U one, but I still charge the customer and then give them their whole set. Like this customer bought for two boards worth 7U stabs, but he sent me this originally, which is 625. So, I mean, all of his parts go back to him and then these will go back to him too. Like, so, I mean, when I have extra parts, it's, it's because I'm gonna build boards with them at some point, you know? Tubies, Max, and Max on deck right now. Thursday is nuts. Uh, you mean Wednesday? Wednesday got nuts? Man, Wednesday is like the day I was I chose to do. I I thought I was the only one for a little while. All a bunch of good uh, keyboard builders, but maybe I need to 
either collaborate with some of those guys or do it on my own. Like find a find a new day or something. Um, but that's hard, right? Like I don't want to go to Top Clack Day. I want to watch Top Clack. I want to watch Mechs on Deck. So I do, but it's always like the Tuesday before. I didn't have to do that this week because <laughs> I was on it last week. Um, maybe it's time to change. Maybe. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, the I think the right way is probably for us to find a way to collaborate. I just, I don't know. It's effort. I guess I'll reach out, try, and be like, hey, why don't we do a fucking chillin' and squad chat and squad building? Then I have to set up push to talk. I need like a little macro board so I can like go hot on the mic and not find a way to like toggle <laughs> um you know how it goes we'd all kind of have to set that up because <laughs> there's gonna be times right where i want to like all right Jax. you know what i'm down man i'm down i'll uh who all streams on wednesday send me a list chubies it sounds like um Use a 2K board as a foot pedal. Just map every key to the push to talk. Just step all over Kepler or something crazy like that. <laughs> Ridiculous. Ridiculous, guys. Break in. So Apiary doesn't always stream on this day, I thought. Um, I think she does does sometimes, right? I mean, I'm down. I'm totally down to squad stream with all those guys. It's better for all of our communities, too, because, you know, then then all of our people see the other streams, too, and meet the other streamers. Nathan did half and half on his gasket. Half and half what? What exactly did he do half and half? So yeah, so these are lubed Telios that we're doing, and I already lubed them yesterday. I don't know if I updated the board build doc with that I lubed them yesterday, but they are done. So we're not going to be doing that on stream. I try not to do that on stream too much. Like sometimes because I have to, or sometimes because educational, but lubing switch is fairly tedious. Oh, half the keys mapped to one thing, the other half mapped to another. That's actually fair. That seems pretty reasonable. Um, back in the day, when I very first started, I wanted to be like, hey, Nathan, why don't we try and uh, do something once before? And now I like almost feel bad reaching out to him. Not like he's inaccessible or whatever, but his trajectory is so, so like good right now. Like I wouldn't want to like almost wouldn't want to be like, hey, Nathan, uh, do something with me, help me out, you know what I mean? Kind of thing, because there's everybody that watches my stream knows who Nathan Kim is. It's not like it's going to be greater exposure for him. And I want him to succeed so well, man. Like, I'm so happy that that guy went full time and did it. Also, it's effing bananas to me, but, <laughs> but good for him. Now he uses one of those big keys. Pretty reasonable use of, of 2K, right? Just two key macro. Wait, which board did he do it on? On on gasket? Is gasket worth two grand? No way. Like, is that a real thing? Is it really that much? Commanding that much price right now? <laughs> yeah, that seems... Sorry, just in my mind, I'm like, no way, dude. That doesn't even make sense to me.
I, I actually sometimes look on mech market just to be appalled at like what the prices of some things are. Ooh, guess what I got, guys? I ordered at least. Um, I bought, so I was gonna get in on camping round two, but mostly just because I wanted a second set of alphas and, and stuff that I could, so that I didn't feel bad about getting a bunch of shine on these ones, so that I'd have one for display. Um, it, but, but, I, um, I found someone selling R1 the other day for, like, a totally reasonable price, and I jumped on it. So now I'm not going to buy Camping Round 2, because, uh, I don't like Camping Round 2 as much as I like Camping Round 1. And somebody sold one for a reasonable price, so, F it. Got that instead. I'll set that one aside. Um, when I get two Keplers in, so I probably will have two Keplers in my place for a little while, right? I'll have mine, and then another customer who's we're waiting on, or who's waiting on his to and wants it built by me. Uh, Finn Alinea, thank you for following. I appreciate that. Um, Finn Alinea. Um, yeah, so, anyway, yeah, um, I'm, I'm pretty stoked, so I could technically, very quickly, you know, map it to, map it to all be one key, and then, you know, <clears throat> map mine, and just, I wouldn't do that to a customer board. <laughs> I would not step on a customer board, I hope you guys know that. Hope you know that's a joke. Never do. I'm kind of torn on camping too, since it, you weren't around when R1 was run. But I don't really want to have to buy the separate alpha keys. Yeah, so my biggest gripe with camping R2 is that you can't just buy the whole set. Because I I would only want Latin Legends, personally. I Hiragana Legends, to me, are like so overplayed that I have zero desire to do it. In fact, the only like real sub legend sub-legended keys that I'm interested in doing at this time are are like vintage ones. Like I have an old Alps Cyrillic set <clears throat> that I'm just kind of waiting on something to do with it. Um, but I will take advantage of the fact that the space bars will be available and I will jump in on the space bars. So there is that. Yay! Too much on here, and there's a couple that are lighter. Not like extremely so, just a little lighter than others. So I'm gonna seal it from here and put it on those. There we go. All right. <clears throat> um. So I wasn't around when Camping R1 ran, but I was around right when it started being delivered. Um, and I didn't jump in on it on Kono because I was like, who, who spends two hundred dollars on a key set? Crazy. Yeah, I was stupid. There are so many, so many key sets now that I have. <laughs> um, many of which are that much or more. Um, you know how it goes. Especially because I'm the guy who buys like the numpad kid and the you know novelties and not artisans i don't buy the artisans but i do buy the rest um <clears throat> i like hiragana on my gmk bento set but agree it's starting to be overused yeah i'm not saying no one should use it like if you like it you should get stuff in hiragana i just for me it's so overplayed i don't i'm not interested in it and like, I don't, hmm. I don't know if I own any actual sets that have Hiragana subs. I mean, I've had a bunch in my presence, in my possession of customers, like where they've sent them along with their build, board to build, but 
Um, yeah, don't don't dig them. TSC, what's up? Oh no no no! I I hope that your dinner was glorious. That's the best. Good meal. It's hard to argue with. It's all about English lowercase sub legends, people. Um, so yeah, I'm not I'm not quite there either. But um, BBB also thought that Hander Bite was like or key set of the year or something. Oof, sorry man, didn't mean to diss you. Thanks for watching regularly, appreciate that. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, now, um, the thing is, is there are some unique legend sets that I like that I would look forward to. Like if somebody tried to do a, um, like an old SGI type, like with the italicized uh, legends, that'd be cool. I'd be down to get a modern one. But generally speaking, man, I don't know. I want Latin Latin alphas or something unique, something that there isn't a bunch of, maybe at least. Uh, you'd like to see PVT Helvetica? That could be interesting. Um. Every time you tune in, leaving them zeal stabs, you have a stockpile or does everyone send them in? So most people send them in or have me buy them or some, something like that, man. I don't have my own stock. Well, okay, so that's not true. I do have my own little stockpile too. So sometimes when I order customers stuff, like if they're having me order a bunch of stuff, occasionally... I'll jump in on something to make it over the, because I'm interested in jumping in, to make it over the 150 um, so that we can both not have to pay shipping. Or occasionally, like, I wasn't planning on ordering because I was going to wait, but a customer ordered something and we're clearly both going to be over 150 or he was already over 150 or whatever. And, like, I'm like, F it. Yeah, I'll jump in and buy something. And stabs are kind of the thing that is a common go-to for me. So my zeal stabs collection, not other people's, my zeal stabs look something like that right now. So yeah, just shit tons of sets of them. But those are actually mine, not customers's. But I also right now have a lot of my own boards to build. To do so I'm like I need most of those <laughs> only like two of them I think are are uh, not and those are are not for me and those are 6.25 U I think yeah I mean if a customer sends me stuff then they just send it to me which happens fairly frequently with my board builds where like I, I have no part of the process ordering or whatever it's literally just here's all the parts please build okay thanks bye which I mean I'm not I'm not against doing it any way that makes sense for the customer but some of the easiest builds that I do are like customer just sent me all the parts it's like here you go please build this this way thanks those are sometimes the easiest ones that being said I didn't get into this to do easy builds all the time um, like, I actually want want people to be able to learn from from some of the stuff that I do, and I've been lagging on developing any external content um, to make that happen. So what I did actually earlier today is I bought a Practice sixty five, and at some point, or when I let kind of board builds dry up a little bit, which isn't going to be anytime soon, soon, but. At some point, um, I'll get to doing that and I'll make actual produced content out of it. I've been teasing that I might kind of try and do some more of that at some point and I'm going to try to do at least a little bit. Um, I'll do maybe one on how to lube. Not stabs, because you guys see me do that all the time. Like, all the time, all the time. Um, what switches? Uh, one on, you know, building with a bunch of through-hole components other than switches. Probably a simpler one, which will actually just be clips out of my regular build. Um, 
stuff like that. You need to try zeal stabs eventually. So zeal stabs are great. I actually like them a lot. Why would you hurt me like that? I thought we were cool. <laughs> yeah. So so frankly, um, so frankly, yes, I uh, I do have a lot of my own zeal stabs, but customers send them to me, and they are actually kind of the best. That's why I buy them for my stuff. Um, yeah, they're kind of expensive for what they are, but like most zeal stuff. They're pretty top-notch for the category that they're in. And uh, with the, I don't want to say quality control issues that other cherry stabs have been having recently, i.e. potentially looser tolerances, I actually absolutely think they're the best right now to go with. Now... You can make cherry stabs generally not so rattly. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. Um, but I personally believe that there are... Stabilizers are one of the things that have the biggest impact on sound and feel of the board in terms of, like, factors that you'll immediately notice and be annoyed by. If your stabs are rattly or shitty, like, you'll notice and it'll suck and you'll be upset. Um, so, get good ones. I'm not even like a Zeal fanboy. If, like, literally anybody else could come up with a good design that they were selling and it was premium feeling, sounding, etc., I would say go buy theirs. I mean, I'm not sponsored. Not by zeal, not by anyone. Not as of now, so. That's just my opinion. Even if I were sponsored, I would give it to you straight, but uh, I'm not, so I guess maybe a little bit more credibility to it? I don't know. I actually do wonder how people feel about that in the community. I know how I view other people that are sponsored, and it isn't that I don't believe them when they say it's their opinion. I actually think they're, to me, especially because the community's small enough and I've talked to most of those people, like, that I, I just believe them. But I do wonder how the rest of you guys feel. Do you feel like, you know, if you're sponsored by vendor X, Y, or Z, like, those people are more loyal to vendor X, Y, or Z uh, across the board or, or specifically, whatever? I'm just curious. Because it's definitely one of the reasons that I've not sought out any kind of sponsorship or anything like that is because, like, I just want it to seem as, you know, above board as it can. Because I do this shit for fun. I mean, I wouldn't mind, like, making a couple bucks here and having some better, like, someone else advocating for my stream to be watched and stuff, but... Just generally speaking, you know? one of those things that I wonder okay it's funny that every time you tune in man that I'm lubing zeal stabs <laughs> I'm sorry man should I just lube all my stabs in advance should I lube stabs off stream and only do the builds on stream totally curious Like, I want my stream format to work out for everyone. I mean, I want people to know how to loop stabs, though, so I would always show it sometimes. Always. Because it would be dumb not to. Do, 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 do. Okay. I mean, I feel like it's not that bad. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I like that it's not like... I like showing pretty much the whole build process. The only part I won't show too often is switch looping, right? Because it's so tedious. Like, it's so tedious. Like, I I don't like watching other people lube stabs, or lube, uh, not stabs, stabs are fine, but lube switches. So, like, I just don't subject my audience to it very much. 
Plus, I usually do it while I'm like, um, because I tub loop, I usually do a bunch of it while I'm like watching TV or whatever. <laughs> so that I'm not bored. I mean, I guess I wouldn't be bored if I was streaming it, but... Especially not if we've figured out a way to do a squat thing, man. Brush looping is super tedious. Watching tub looping is like nothing to me. Yeah, sure. So tub looping is real simplified. Hey, jerk chicken, what's up, man? How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, I, uh... Yeah, tub looping is way easier, I will say that. Brizion, thanks for following. I appreciate that. Uh, I really, really do. Definitely, definitely hang out here. <laughs> it's a fun place. Um, yeah, so... I... I don't know. I just don't. I just don't brush loop for customers. I don't even brush loop for myself. I feel like the results are not better, personally. They just aren't. People swear by it, but I think it's just because they want something that's like that much more "quote unquote" premium, right? Because if somebody's doing some tedious ass thing in the background, it clearly must be better than like something that's just more scientifically likely to produce a good result, but is actually really simple comparatively, right? So if you think about tub lubing for a second and you think about what it actually means to to tub lube, you're basically just relying on the random patterns of you shaking that mound of stems into a pile of lube. You're just basically relying on the fact that random chance is eventually gonna get, or random distribution, unless you're like shaking it in the exact same pattern every time is gonna yield pretty, pretty uniform results over time. Like, even a short period of time, like me just shaking it for a minute or two. That being said, if people are like super anal about it, and I have done this to some of my own switches, I have a rock tumbler, man. I will put them inside that container and throw that whole container in a rock tumbler. And I did that, and actually I can't tell the difference between how those switches turned out and other switches of the same type. And I did it to Telios. I also did it to Holy Pandas. Um, and frankly, they just turned out about the same. I couldn't tell the difference at all. <sighs> no. Uh, so it depends on how you're lubing them, right? So I don't remember what they're lubed with exactly. They're lubed with one of the Crytox oils, one of the really thin oils, like 106 or something like that. But generally speaking, no, I won't. Because when you tub lube, you, you're putting on, so the amount of, the way that they applied lube to that is very, very tiny amounts. But when you tub lube, you're applying like a huge amount of lube comparatively, because it's gonna spread all over the outside of the entire surface. Which wouldn't be like, wouldn't be a bad thing and isn't a bad thing it's just more wasteful but the amount of that grease type crytox because i use pretty much exclusively on my own stuff i will do for other people blends or oils but always for me it's 205 grade zero or 3204 i've done some 3203 hey what's up clavier clavier <laughs> clavier i don't know how you want to say it but Anyway, back to the lubing. So no, I don't. There's a tiny amount. And it's basically just like a very thick blend at that point. I mean, and they're all based on the same, they're all, they all have Teflon in them, right? So, <laughs> I mean, they all have PTFE in them and some other solvent. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much how it goes. So customer wants to try and keep his board as free of fingerprints as is really realistically possible. So um, I'll go back to when I wore the gloves and did the last one, I will say it is not possible to completely keep fingerprints off of a PVD plate because you're gonna get one somewhere on there and that 
part between the switches, like I've tried with Q-tips, there's no way to not just smudge whatever goes in there, unfortunately. Fortunately though, you don't actually really see the plate. You see a little bit of reflected light through the keycaps, but not like a ton because the gaps are small, but I will clean my hands. So I will be RB. Sorry guys, but like literally just a minute. Sorry guys, so, so sorry. Hands cleaned, and then to make it even a little bit better, take some hand sanitizer to just dry out my fingerprints just a tiny little bit, like to get like any oils that may be immediately forming on there off just a little bit more. So washed and then dried out a little bit more. Um, tiny has good emotes. I got gifted a sub in her channel. Yeah. So, which kitty? Oh, the ki oh the, the emote kitty. I thought you saw my cat or something. All right, so now they're like squeaky clean and free of oil. And we're gonna try. Look at that, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know why I did that washing and all that stuff now. I'll do it again after I apply these. Um, so yeah, we're doing 7U to 1.5. So if the board supports that, then it has to be. see the image guys come on okay yeah so the seven U's that offer yeah they're all as right justified as they get basically looks like I'll be wiping my hands off and redoing that anyway There's a chance of getting a tiny amount on here now. I should probably set up emotes from my channel. I guess I'm bad at that stuff. I'll get better. In fact, what I'm actually probably gonna do is just hire someone to do overlays that are better than the ones that I have. Make me some emotes or something. Because uh, it's pretty inexpensive. 
talking to some other people who do the thing. It's pretty cheap. Or who stream, I mean. Seems incredibly cheap, in fact. Probably just do it. I mean, cost of doing business, right? Oh, yeah. So, what are these for? They are little tiny washers. Little itty bitty baby washers, nylon. They are to insulate, oh no, don't do that. Okay, so those ones came unseated, but these didn't. So they are to insulate the metal screws from making contact. So if you look real close right here, I think that's centered enough. So if you look real close right here, right, you see that metal contact and that one are close to that. So the head of the screw could in fact, could in fact um, make a short between those intermittently or whatever. I've seen it happen one time before. Um, and actually I saw it happen on the top side of the board on a clue board with zeal stabs because zeal stabs have the um, the insert in the plastic piece on the top side. So there's a downside to zeals if you have that one board at least. Potentially others. Um, but that was where the actual hole that it went into had a, basically it was a poorly designed PCB on IMO, and that there was um, <clears throat> hazel coating on the inside of that hole, so. Or on the top side, at least. Like it was a pad or something, but it, it wasn't, so it was junk. Like that is poor design, IMO. Yeah, I'm gonna need to wipe my hands off again. Both oils and lube. It might just be finger oils at this point, but but I don't want to take the chance on the plate. I'm not putting that on. Um, yeah, hey, have a good night, Martakia. Thanks for joining. Yeah, so basically, it just insulates from short circuits. It's a good idea anytime you're building a PCB for a keyboard, just put a nylon washer on there. These are really inexpensive. I'm talking like a few dollars for hundreds, plural, of them. Like, there's no reason not to do this thing. None whatsoever. You guys can afford it if you can afford a board like this. And you should. <clears throat> anyway, um, okay, so it's actually pretty clean. I think it's just finger oils at this point. But I will get the microfiber. 
Oh yeah, I totally got whatever was on there, but more drying my fingers out. Yeah, <laughs> super dry. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so now with that being said, or with that being done, let's get this on here. Um, okay. And I don't see any right justified key layouts that don't allow for at least 1.5. So that has to be the one. Okay. Cool. We'll get a few of these anchors in. In the fixed positions, where we don't have to worry about weird layouts or layout issues. Um, and we will, we will solder it in. has to be yeah it has to be that I'm actually not gonna solder that one in I'll solder this one in I'll make sure that that's in the right place first um do some of this second to bottom row stuff yeah so I don't know this is always a good idea right always put in some anchor switches if you can always 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 um, solder in a few anchors here and there it will make your life easier customer if you are in chat Please send me a Discord message really quick as to whether or not you want step caps lock. Because default would absolutely be that, and I think I call that out in my build docs. I know I do, but verify that's what you want. Before you're forced into a situation that you don't want, potentially. I mean you could always ask me to change it and I would, but you know before I ship it, at least. Yar. Okay. I'll look at it in a minute before I actually solder one in either way. But we got some good anchor spots in. And now we're going to throw this on. Set this off to the side. You know what we didn't do? Like fools. Like fools. Um, we're going to pull this up. And we're going to go to this. Because this is incredibly important. Anyone who's building a board, always do this. So the E6 board that we had, the E65 board that we had before, right, was not polycarbon. It was actually missing, like one of its LEDs didn't work. So that was not good news. So these ones at least look like they work, at least in red. Um, and real quick, we'll do this. We can test this just like this. Insert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So far so good. Okay. 
Here we go. We didn't get a zero activation. Okay, we did. And then we got that. All right, so sorry to make you guys wait, but I don't actually want to solder in before we've tested this. That's how we, that's how we become unable to verify that a board did or didn't work as delivered. Give the customer the option to do that if he needs. Um, I guess it was this one. Oh no, it's like way over here. R does not appear to work. What's that all about? So no R. Okay. Oh wow. Oh no. It helps if I no? R just doesn't work. Hmm. No bueno. Well, let's see if we can jump it. Well, let's see if R is the only one before we do anything drastic. shift yeah so if it's just that R that doesn't work maybe we can jump it I think this was the function, right? Oh, that's, yeah, that's... I'm pretty sure that was function, which makes sense. So yeah, so R doesn't work, right? We verified that. E R. Weird. Okay, now we will try jumping something somewhere. So this is a PCB on the actual PCB issue. Okay. Wow, okay. So this little tiny pad, if you look right here, I'm gonna zoom in, I'll show you guys what's up with it. So we can fix this. So watch this. Right there, no R. So what's going on there is this little tiny doodad is not perfectly flowed onto there or it's actually busted. Either way we can fix that. The way I'm going to try to fix it, which is real obvious, right? So we should actually be able to tell if that's the case or not. Okay, so it's that one. Right, so what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna touch this. 
Yeah, so there is contact there. It's just that pad, it probably isn't flowed down, which is totally reasonable and easy enough to fix. I still wish I had a microscope to help you guys understand how this works, but we'll do with what we got. Okay. Sorry, guys. So right here, we're literally actually what we're gonna do is make this real easy in case you guys have never seen me do any of this stuff before we're gonna take a little flux we're gonna apply with a tiny little what I need is a toothpick actually whatever I got something that'll work just fine Not stripped, no nothing. I'm just gonna take a little bit of flux. Normally we use the flux pen because I like it more, but we were talking about it. Uh, were we talking about it on a Mexon deck? Or I was maybe talking about it with the Mexon deck guys. This is way more flux than is absolutely necessary. Yeah, I think I was talking about this with Osiris. After their stream so we want to get a little bit of flux on there and then what we're gonna do is we get some solder pull a little bit of solder on here just a tiny little bit too much but flux and maybe even a tiny little bit more solder than it's absolutely necessary we're gonna do this right we're gonna retest it now our works just fine so see what we did there guys easy peasy a little tiny bit of PCB repair work for you guys to refer back to now do, do, do. Cool, and now we we tested our our PCB. So, what we'll do is get to a sovereign. Um, do we test all of our stuff on this side? Maybe we didn't actually. I don't know. Easy enough to just hit these one more time. Control, Alt, okay. I think that's a... Okay, and that's left, so. Okay, easy peasy, man. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, turn our little fan on. Clean off our tip. up real quick all 
Okay. So I'm happy we were able to repair that little tiny PCB glitch. That always sucks. Last week's board with its little PCB glitch unfortunately required customer to order a new PCB to be 100% sure we get it. But I mean, I... I I kind of just assume that man use like maybe not the PCB manufacturer, but like group by runners are going to do a hundred percent accountability check of the actual PCBs, right? But I guess I'm wrong. I guess that's not how they feel about it. Which is no bueno. Like, if I'm making a PCB, I want to make sure it works, right? It's going to have my name on it. Especially if I ever intend on making another keyboard ever again. But I guess that's just me. Do, 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 do. Who am I to say though, right? I mean, whatever. People obviously buy exclusive boards and they are good quality, so. Like, otherwise. Hey, Max on Deck, thanks for rating with 24 viewers, man. That's awesome. Thank you guys, seriously. Man, I loved being on your guys' stream last week so much. It was a freaking blast. Seriously. Seriously a blast. Um, like, some of the most fun I've had in keyboards so far. Ten strong. What's up, man? Yeah, so... What I was just saying, though, is I feel like PCB um, menus or GB runners have to kind of check out the, the PCB before they put it out. So we found a little tiny um, flaky connection on the R key where we had to reflow the diode on the pad that attaches... Or, on the joint that attaches directly to the solder pad for the switch, like on the dioded leg. It happens, right? Like, but at the same time, how do you have a switch that doesn't work all the way? The last one of these boards that we got, one of the LEDs didn't work. Hopefully this isn't like a pattern. I mean, I have two data samples, so not like a ton, right? So I'm really hoping that it's not like some big QC problem at exclusive, but that it's actually just like two bad data samples, whatever. Shit happens, right? Doodad is a super technical term, as is thingy. I agree with you. I agree. You are 100% correct. Thingy and doodad. Proper, proper terms. All right. <clears throat> So now that we got this in, I do actually want to make sure that we're getting the right uh, size over here. Which I guess I should have done long, long ago. But we'll do it right now. So, Mex on deck, man. If you guys are in, actually in chat, how was your stream, man? I saw the beginning of it. I was pretty stoked. Um, I can't wait to watch it. <laughs> I cannot wait to watch it. Um, Tyson is a freaking cool dude. He seems like a cool dude. Do, 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 do. Okay. 
What is the... Oh, yeah, yeah, I know what this is. Yeah, yeah, because there's the, the blocker there. <laughs> okay, so that is, in fact, where it goes. I think I could talk for like 10 to 15 on how bad the MK Ultra announcement was done for their announcement of failure, defeat, or whatever. Essentially, the opposite of how I want to handle PR. Um, yeah, dude. I mean, unload, dude. Tell me how it is. Seriously. I'm, I'm okay with hearing what people's opinions are on this. Um, yeah. I really am, actually. I mean, no, like... You don't gotta feel shame here. We tell it like it is on my channel. And that's the way I want it to be. I mean, I don't want to slam people if they're actually doing an okay job. And just... Bungled one thing, really. A little bit, but... You know, you kinda gotta own that, though, right? Like, if you messed something up, or... Or you're handling something wrong or whatever and you figure that out and you gotta you gotta step it up to like get better then that's what you gotta do there's nothing wrong with owning that part right um essentially uh you don't think dcs yuri is gonna make it why do you say that man it's only a few days in and when i looked at the numbers it looked to me as though, well, so for one, I don't understand why they went from an MOQ of 100 at 180 and then removed that option. Now it's just 200 at 130. Um, that being said, when I looked at it, it had the same number of, the same number of um, people signed up for the Alp set as they did for the, um, as they did for the freaking Alphas. The SA alphas, so why would we think that it won't make it? I'm really curious, Jeff Leopard. I want to know. Um, yeah, I mean, drop it to 100, dude. Like, I'm good with a 100 MOQ at 180. It's a way better deal than... DCS, um, then DCS, uh, throwback was, right? I'm good with it. Oh, why did I pull this off? So, we were looking. Customer wanted 15115. Fair. Because most sales happen week one and two. We're at 38. Gonna need like, uh, I actually, don't most of the sales occur like right there at the end? I don't know, I never jump in until the end. <laughs> like I jump in the last couple days. Yeah, maybe I missed some stuff as a result of it, but shit happens. I want to put off owing people money until I need to owe them money, right? I mean, and that doesn't mean like I don't want to pay people when I owe them. It means I don't want to owe them in the first place until I need to. Let me make sure this worked. Yeah, it does. Cool. We good. We good. Um. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I don't know, man. Like, I can't guarantee it, but I'm not giving up on it yet. That's like when they gave up on, that's like when Ryzen and Project Keyboard gave up on GMK Rocket. I was really bummed. And maybe Mass Drop will change. Maybe they can go back to a MOQ of 100 at 180. Like, offer those 12 people or whatever, like, sorry. You know what I mean? I don't know. I would be willing to pay 180 for it.
Like, legit. Legit. I just would, man. I don't know. People are silly. Actually, so... Actually, customer's image shows not stepped caps lock in the image he said he wanted it, so I guess we will not be doing stepped caps. Yeah, um... Yeah, I, I would go in at 180 for sure. Like, totally worth to me. I don't know why they why they would do it different. That's dumb. And on drop, I especially usually don't want to jump in till the end because like if it's not gonna run, like I don't know. I just feel like my money is safer being not obligated at all if it clearly isn't gonna run. Maybe that's bad, but that's why I think posting all those numbers is not necessarily healthy. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I hope that it makes it. And if more people sign up, or almost as many people are signed up for the DCS set as the fucking... as the regular set at every given time in the mix, then it's really dumb if it doesn't make it. Then I think they really need to examine what the hell it is they're doing with themselves. There clearly is demand at that point for a well-organized, nice Alps keycap set in the world. But whatever, man. Your other hot take is that to get Dracula kitted, but most people you've heard want night mode error costs 240. Uh... I mean, honestly, I've said this before. I actually think we went the wrong direction with making little tiny kits. I just want everything. Just give me one kit that's everything. I don't care. Whatever. I don't, I'll never use the 40% stuff. Just give it to me. I'm never going to use the Nord UK or whatever. Either offer it or don't offer it. Just give me the whole thing. I want the whole thing. I'm always going to buy it, even if I think I'm going to always try and keep that on a 65% or whatever. <clears throat> like, I just will. I guess I don't buy the, like, 40% and stuff now, but if you forced me to, I wouldn't be that mad. Because in the long run, it would probably be cheaper for people like me who also want the freaking 10 key and the space bars and whatever. Leave secondary kits for something like, um, what's it called, like, um, like different colored legends or different, um, sub, sub legends or whatever. Otherwise just give full up kits. Give me one baby, maybe one child kid and if you don't like the base neutral look, yeah, sure. I'm there, man. I 100% believe that that should be the way that it flows. Like, I might want to sell these some of my some of my keycap sets at some point. Like, in theory, I mean, probably I never will because that's kind of the way I roll. But like, in theory, I might want to sell these. And so, in my mind, it's like just give me all of them because I'll just offer them for sale on Mech Market and. You're gonna take them all, or you're not gonna get any of mine. On the secondary market, it's easy to have that. So, making me buy all of them doesn't hurt. Especially if we can have, like, full 
relatively well kitted sets in the neighborhood of like $130 if everybody were buying all of them. You know what I mean? We've seen that happen a couple times now with sets where it was just like basically the kitchen sink minus like maybe one or two child kits with really obscure stuff. And so in my mind, it's like, then we should just be making them like that. I get it. A lot of people like 60s and like reduced sets, but having the option to go build it however you want, build with that set in mind in the future is like, there's so much value in that to me. Even if I weren't building a bunch of people's keyboards and showing off keycaps on them or whatever, it would still be valuable to me. Okay, I think we managed to mostly get no fingerprints on them. There's like one right here in a place that looks like it's easy to get off anyway. But of course it's not easy to get off. It's a switches room, but it's mostly okay. Um, and if I don't like the base neutral look, yeah, so Violet on Cream. So Violet on Cream is an interesting example because Violet, on, and maybe not a good one, I think, because Violet on Cream was only two colors, not three, right? So less total. Um, oh, I don't know. Maybe the mold complexity is not any, actually any less, but there's definitely some logistics portion of it that's easier. some portion of it. I don't know how big that really is. But yeah, Camping R2. Camping R2 is a shit show. I was just telling the stream earlier that I, um, to me it's a shit show. Like having the Alpha Legends completely separate and the Hiragana as the base kit, like I was, I was like, yeah, because I have a set of camping but I was like, I really don't want, cause I want to have another set of camping to like, so that I can display where it doesn't get a ton of shine or whatever. So I was like, well, I'll buy the R2, I guess. And somebody posted an R1 for sale the other day. And I just decided to straight skip out on R2 and buy that instead. Cause it was for a decent price. Like whatever. Jumping out of R2, jumping into this. <laughs> So now I'm going to have two sets of camping. <laughs> yeah, man. Totally a fiend. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. Who uses English? Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to say that camping R2 isn't cool in its own right. It is. It's just everybody loves R1 more. Like, just rerun the same novelties and stuff. I mean, that's what I want anyway. Plus, I mean, I guess they're child kits, so if I want the novelties, I can just get them right. Actually, I don't I don't remember if they were. Um, I am gonna get the Space Bars one. That is definitely a child set of R2 that I'm gonna get because I don't have Space Bars kit for R1, and they're the same colors. What you gonna do? Yeah, so when Olivia reruns, I'm gonna get it for sure. And this month, and this month's hard, right? I think the must buy this month <clears throat> for me is cafe. <laughs> Because it has that beautiful, beautiful look. The only thing that I wish was different about Cafe, and it's already running, so, uh, you know, I don't, you don't, I don't, we don't get to make new choices now, but the only thing that I wish was different about it is that the 
there was the option to have a um I don't remember what the kit's called, but the all dark one, the monochromatic one for the numpad also. Because now the monochromatic look will only work on TKL and smaller. I feel like it wouldn't have actually even been that much more expensive to get them to run it that way. To add those keys in to the monochromatic set. Um, I looked at this month and bought First Love on the last night. I almost bought First Love on the last night. What's up, Shocks? I almost did too, and then I decided, you know what, I'm waiting. As cool as First Love is, uh, I've bought like everything that Canon Keys has to offer for like the last five months. So, um, and lots of purple sets coming out, and what I really want is Black Lotus. You know, if it ever actually runs. It was beautiful though. I wanted the dust pad. Here's the issue that I have actually with dust pads, right? So I love Canon Keys and Upos is freaking awesome, but I wish there was an option for me to receive my desk pad with my GB key set so that I didn't have to order it at like $15 shipping on like a $17 item that was definitely only gonna be able to ship by itself. Like, I don't mind waiting for the desk mat for when I get the key set, if I can just save the $15 shipping or whatever to get it at the same time instead. I wish that that was a change that he would allow. I would absolutely choose to wait. Um, for some, for some I wouldn't though, right? But that would be freaking sweet. Because I don't want to pay $30 or $32 or whatever for a keypad or for a desk mat. And when I do, I'll buy one of these like big ones like this Alley Off. Uh, the XL. Which is a massive desk pad. Um, so yeah, that's how I feel about them. It's the only thing I would change. But First Love's desk mat did look good, and the key set looked amazing too. I just couldn't couldn't do it, man. I have too many buys. Funny thing is, is I meant to get in on Austin and like literally just had bad sleep and stuff the night before, and then just didn't wake up in time to jump in, and then I was rushed to like go get food with people, and so in the end I just missed it. Um, so I guess I did mean to jump in on something and then I didn't and there isn't really the option now unfortunately um, do, I think I said to you, hi to you shocks right what's up man you wanted first love Kipora not big on black lotus it's looking like it might yeah it got re-upped on... Oh, it did. Okay, cool. So it probably is then. Um, in December, maybe? I feel like that would be an okay month for me. But a bad month for a lot of people. Probably. Like, probably a lot of people don't want to see a key set run in December. I'm good with it. Got no kids here. My Christmas money is for me. So it will be okay. <laughs> I will jump in if you run it in December. I don't know, I wonder what will actually run in December. I feel like if it were a strong set, 
people would still jump in anyway. I feel like the right move for the vendors would be to try and move like ultra strong sets like Olivia or something in December, even though they're not, right? I mean. <laughs> okay, oh no, there's one. That's right. Pretty sure it is. We're gonna do it. Okay. So now we're gonna test it and it should all work. We're gonna test the top with keycaps. <laughs> So seven maybe, uh, we missed. Also, if I hit those buttons, oh, maybe I missed a few. Oops. Okay. Yeah, so seven. <laughs> Easy peasy. Apparently I missed a few. Mm, 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 mm. And then, oh yeah. Okay. S. F and G. It looks like. It's way too much especially you can go on wish and get death mats for like 10 bucks yeah so i mean they're not going to be the like awesome like themed ones right but you're right and frankly like i just don't if i'm already going to be buying if i'm buying the death mat i'm probably buying i'm probably buying the uh sorry blowing some smoke away i'm probably gonna buy not only the death mat but the actual key set and if I'm doing that, well, frankly, dude, just let me ship them at the same time. <laughs> so a customer is worried about fingerprints on the PVD, so we will try. Get those off. Which we mostly did. Okay. But, but. Do, 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 do. Perfect. I think that's right. I do believe. So there are no inserts 
in this board. So you want to be careful not to over tighten. I'll leave it pretty loose for now. This is especially when you want to back them off just a little bit to make sure you're not cross-threading anything or anything like that. Because these have already been tapped. They're polycarbonate holes that have been tapped with a machine screw th thread pitch. All right, so be extra careful when you do a board like this and polycarbonate. Anybody who watches this, please use your screwdriver to go in reverse and back the threads out until you hear the threads snap directly into place. And you should feel the screw actually center, right? And now keep in mind, like I said, if there's no brass or copper insert or not copper, brass insert usually, um, or whatever, um, then you're threading a, a, a really, The pitch is pretty extreme on machine screws like this, and you're threading that into plastic, and it's a metal screw, right? So it's gonna be like dead simple to strip. So you should feel it click and feel it kind of center, or it should feel relatively centered. And then be careful with your torques, not torques bits, but like the torque you're putting on these. You want them snug, but not tight, tight. Because it's always easy to go back and tighten it a little more. Right. Okay, now that feels like it's in. It does, it does. Now we'll throw some keycaps on here. Does anybody have a preference? Um, yeah, have I ever joined a... Yes, uh, Calm Depths. Jeff Leopard. I fell out of love with Calm Depths before it arrived. And I had suspicions at the time that it was going to be like GMK Carbon, where it just doesn't look as good as its SA counterpart. And that's saying something, because the SA counterpart for Calm Depths is um, Max Key SA, not... Uh, oh, did I drink all my... No, I didn't. Is Max Key SA not... Uh, SPSA. I've contemplated many times now buying the SA, the, S, uh, the Max Key SA um, Calm Depths. But I ha just haven't done it. It's not that important to me. I don't really like SA that much. Okay, so now we're going to throw some caps on. Does anybody have anything in mind that they want for this? What can you think of? Shoko. Borealis won't fit on it. Um, Shoko would fit on it. Twid it twid. I don't know if it look. I actually feel like with polycarb boards, like darker colors actually look better. Um, but if you guys want Shoko, I'll do Shoko. Oh, you gotta sit. Okay. I mean, that seems to be the consensus so far. Anybody else? I, I would have thrown like, yeah, like modern dole, sure. Something like that on it, even though we threw modern Dolch on the last one, I think. Um, oof. Okay, so so far, it's looking pretty outnumbered to Shoko. We're gonna do Shoko. this up get that white on black action going back in the draw man it's my favorite set though GMK white on black so good that's the thing I need to buy a second set of <clears throat> okay 
<laughs> so, Shoko. Now the question is, do we put the... Do we put... The, um... The accents on? And if so, which ones? Probably escape. Enter, of course, escape. And we just enter escape and arrows because it's 65. I think that's what we'll do. Maybe spacebar. See how you guys feel about it. Accentless. Oof. Accentless? Frisco melt. Freaking. Like a heathen. I mean, I'll do it. If that's what everybody wants. Oh, no, no, no. I'll do it. Well, I didn't call you heathen on the dark. I actually thought that was a good idea. Cleaning your white on black set now. Nice. White on black's great, man. Come on. Don't be a pain. My Shoko set has like a bit of shine on it already. This is a set they'll run again, I'm sure, at some point. And I will buy another set of it. It's an amazing set. One of my best purchases thus far. Um. kind of would like it with accents too. Frisco melt, man. I'm sorry if you get outvoted. But I don't know. So far, there's only two votes. I should probably do straw holes, but I'm lazy. Without. Oh, well, we can do it. So that's two for no accents. I'd do it. Note that the background lights, the backlighting is going to be red right off the bat. I mean, not that we couldn't change it, but. The accents look like this. These colors. These bright teal almost. I'm good with whatever, man. Is there like a super? <laughs> I don't see like a super or windows or whatever. I just see like another FN in the one U. Oh, there are. They're just in here. Yeah, we can do the light blue. I was like, where is this? Mm. 
Yeah, I'll do no. No accents is fine with me. It's just the um, the color, the backlight color is going to automatically be red because that was the default. I don't know why they didn't ship it with white because technically there could be like color imperfections on those LEDs, like only red works or something. Um. Okay. No accents it is since no one has stepped in and said do it with accents. Not sure it's a good idea to do. Oh, it is. It works. Backward. Looks good. So the arrows seem like accents would be better because then you could find them. But to each their own. You guys tell me what the order of these is that you want. I can never remember what the actual order is supposed to be for these. Mostly because I don't use the default order for 65%. I use like home and end and delete and stuff. No <laughs> bad 693. I'll do it. But there's sub legends. Okay, Frisco. No, I'll do that. I'll do it. Boom. How about I pull that out of the way? <laughs> doing it and I am gonna do some accents but it's only gonna be the arrows Ooh. that could be that could be worthwhile you mega need Shoko R2 I mean, there was a there was a thing on Kono's store asking about it. Like, what would you like us to rerun? Shoko was definitely on that list. I think that's what I'd do. That's what I voted for on their sh on their site. Yeah, that'll work. That looks good. Weird, but good. Okay. So this was really tight on the not polycarb one too. This top bit, the machining, the tolerances between the top and bottom case were like super, super tight. And these are all the same size and use the same screw type. If it's still up, you'll vote. Yeah, like Shoko was really good. The other options were like, well, um, I think one of them was um, was Calm Depths, which is like clearly no. Wasn't actually that good. 
And I own it. I just don't think it was that good. And again, you want them snug. Now there's way more threads in this, so it would still be easy, but harder. Um, harder to strip, but still absolutely doable. And I can't feel it back out of the threads in this at all, so there's that. I can feel it get in and get tighter, but I can't feel it like click out and meet the threads on the back side. Oh, I felt it there. Yeah, it absolutely happens on the front, noticeably. Okay, it's actually feeling it. I'm feeling it. I just didn't that one time. And it's snugged down correctly, so. Yep. Um. I would like a chance at, uh, at JTK Cyrillic to uh, non-magnetic screws. I would too, and I didn't jump in on it, and it was so cheap when it ran. I'm bummed that I didn't jump in on it, but at the same time, not like completely distraught. So this is gonna look weird, because it's gonna be red. And it only glows from the sides. So, you know, there's that. Was there stuff on the front for you to solder in other points? I don't think there were, were there? So they didn't think ahead on that one. Um, yeah, so that's where we go. Boom. And let me... It looks freaking good, man. So it's pretty loose because I don't have bump-ons, but... Let me do this other thing real quick, where I go kapow, not that one, where I go pow, and then, oops, that's the one I wanted. And then we do this. All right, guys. Yeah, the LED color is obviously not perfect. We'll, uh, okay, okay. All right, fine. Why don't we work on that? Why don't we work on that then? Um, <clears throat> so is this thing QMK or I think it is, right? I don't remember. I don't remember. I had to look it up. I'm pretty sure it was. I think I remember um, being on QMK Configurator. Ugh, it's gonna be a pain if I have to actually compile a QMK load, though. To get the colors to change. Oh, I wouldn't have to do that anyway. Oh, no. E65? So the default layout has... Unfortunately... Hmm. I'm not sure I can do it because I don't have a function key. Like I'd have to unscrew this thing to get the colors to be different, but I can do it. I mean, it's either that or reset it. I don't want to really do too much of that, so I'll unscrew it. Yeah. 
Nah, we're just gonna deal with it red. I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, I don't like the LED placement either. I'll take pictures though and post them with it, with like white or something. I don't know. Honestly, there's like not good colors, I think, to do this with, with just on the side where the whole thing doesn't, with Shoko. No, I can change it. There's a function layer. So the PCB has two different switches here. It, it has a bunch of switches. This is right alt, but right next to it is the function layer on the default layout. And then the function layer plus RGB mode for A. So I can unscrew this thing and change the colors, probably. Um, maybe. Is there another one? No, that's what it is. Well, <laughs> here, I'll show you, because you guys are asking, right? Yeah, so it doesn't require unscrewing. What it requires is, or it doesn't require flashing. Here, I'll just do this real quick. This didn't actually take very long. It's okay. I'll show you guys. There's no switch in the in the function layer spot on the default mapping for this keyboard. So We'll get there. Too bad I don't have Hamon. Uh, I'm gonna get Hamon. I think. Uh, I think uh, when I show up to NorCal, Starstone is gonna have it for me. He said he would sell it to me. He said he wasn't in a rush and that he'd sell it to me. And I was like, well, why don't we do it at NorCal? This is when I was in Seattle. Oh, I guess I didn't undo that. So. Need to bring him cash. So I'm looking forward to it. Hamon though, like, isn't actually that nice of a set. I just feel like I did miss out on it. It'd be nice to have in the repertoire. In my... Okay. So I think if I do this, clearly that's alt. And then... That's control, which is useless. Alt, control. I think it's this one. Yeah. So that's off. There's no... Okay. that look you guys like that okay that's what we're going with lighter darker or a different color I think this is it this is what we're leaving so I mean this is easy enough um, ah, shit man you know what all right look I'm just gonna remap this because customer only has one um Okay, 
Okay, guys, I'll remap it. That makes sense. So I'll let that compile in the background. Yeah, I mean, I'll turn it off next, I guess, but might as well flash it. Oh, I don't know why I did it that way. I need to set it up with one other thing. So I need it to compile, and then I need to go on to the first layer. And so that's reset. Okay. Now what I need is, I guess I need, so I'm setting that to function and then I'm gonna set like function layer that button to do a flash, right? So, or go into debug mode. And then that way I can compile this thing and download it. And then I can flash it real quick, hopefully. I don't usually flash on this actual system, so I don't know. I like the cyan, I guess, but I generally don't love a lot of LEDs either. So, you know, it is what it is, unfortunately. What you gonna do, man? What you gonna do? You're back, what's with 963? I asked what people wanted in those locations and they were like, just random, 963. So I did it. I did it. They're the right profile, so they're there. I don't remember what switches go here or what standard 65 layout is in these positions because I don't ever use it, right? Like I always do like, um, like delete. So I'll have like function layer delete and then I'll have like home end and something else, or home and end here, and then something else. I don't know. Okay, so let's try and reset this thing now. Recognize? No, it looks like it does not. Ah, uh, come on. Okay. All right. This is a pain, but I'm gonna do it. Oh, oh, that's right. It's so basically, I don't have the driver for whatever this STM is on here, but I do on that system right there. So I'll just reset it. It's okay. All for you guys. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Place that file. Okay, guys. It's okay, though. You guys get to wait for this for a sec. I love you guys. Trying to help you out. 
trying to get these different colors, trying to get it programmed. Normally I would do this part off stream, but... irritating AF. Actually, so what I can do is I can share this stream. Oh, let's do that. But the audio is not good. I was actually playing with this recently. Aha. See the audio? Bad. The delay. Oh, well. So, yeah, what I was doing is... Search for E65. This is E65. Default map. One. Reset and debug, so this is how you get it back into DFU mode. And then one already has all these other things. So I think that's what I want. I hope. Can I set them both to one? I think I can. Yeah, I guess I can. Yeah. Okay. 
Cool. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to hit uh, compile up here. Oh. So there's one with a blocker. So anti setting you blocker. So this is going to load a no map, though. Because I want this default, whatever. God damn it. Sorry, guys. This is why I didn't want to show you guys, but you're like, those colors look bad. So I'm like, okay. Alright, guys. We'll do it. Okay, so now we're back here and we compile this. It's gonna bake. No, it's all good, man. We're doing it. We are doing it now. Because we want to succeed. <laughs> we'll do this. I don't know why it takes so long to compile. This is like a pretty fast system, honestly. Okay, we'll try one more time, right? Get it into DFU mode, we're actually gonna push this button because there isn't a default. And then plug it in. You're gonna see it show up on the screen as a DFU device, right? Then we're gonna flash it. When it says it's done, Disconnected, now it's connected, right? Yeah, so this must not be mapped. This is what I'm doing. So the layout that I chose clearly isn't going to support that thing. But the old one will. And I'll be able to verify that when I plug it in and change the colors. Yep. So I'm not going to go. Am I? I guess I am. God. All right, guys. All right. I guess our stream was going too short. There's no way we were going to we we're going to get out of here on a good time, right? <laughs> I mean, we're doing a good time. It's just OK. So now what we're going to do is we're going to choose uh, it's ANSI 7U. ANSI 7U. I think it's all. Is that right? Why is it not moving in now? the one okay so now that we're here 
right? We can. Okay. Hey guys. All right. And this we want to be So now what we want is to do like hue colors. So RGB we'll do toggle. Oh no. Sorry, we'll do toggle. We'll do mode plus, mode minus, and then we'll do hue up, hue down. Brightness up, brightness down. I don't want to do that the other way. You brightness, brightness, and then that's RGB modes, and then we can do saturation, right? Sat plus. Sat minus. I guess we could do like effect plus and minus. Okay. So now I don't really care about the rest of it, so I'm gonna pile that. Maha. Okay guys. Now we'll reload this thing. And it should work just fine. when it compiles. So yeah, so this is QMK Configurator. There's also a way to do this with like straight QMK, which I can do on this system also. Um, but then we would be doing like QMK in a box, edit a file. I don't want to do all that right now. I'm not even sure I have the E65 file sets. Here we go. Plug this all back in. Screw this back together real quick so it doesn't fall apart on us.
and get this working. Be beautiful. Beautiful. And we'll change it to our heart's content. And we can reflash it without hitting the button on the underside because now we have a debug mode. Um, switch. Function layer switch. So I, I guess I kind of omit doing a lot of QMK stuff on my actual channel. Um, I feel like it's relatively boring stuff, but I mean, not boring, like not necessary. It's just like, it's not particularly exciting and it's actually really easy to step through, especially if you're using QMK configurator like that. I guess next week, not next week, but the week after, I'm gonna do another plaid build and I'll almost certainly um, do something then. Okay, so now, boom, plug this in. Uh, we'll turn the lights back on. And then what did we do? We did toggle mode. All right, so we want that. We want. What do we have? That was saturation. Yeah, so that's saturation. And then this is hue. Right, so try and. Saturation all down and the brightness down. So that looks decent on camera. There we go, guys. Boom. Uh, refresh. What do you mean, refresh? Um, <laughs> different key spot. Call me Jack. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So now we're all here. Now we can do a typing test. Sorry about all that, guys. I'm gonna mute this. Oh, refresh now earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now that we're here, I will pull up my Firefox browser. Make that visible, not that one. Make this visible. And we can do a typing test real quick. Um, I guess before we do that though, I'm gonna turn this fan off and you guys can kind of hear what it sounds like about, you know, yay far away. Uh, let me get it visible again, right? So we're a little more than that. Okay, so here we go. Sounds good. Yeah, the blue does actually look good with it, huh? Okay, cool. So now, now that we've got it all programmed and it's all good, normally, like I said, I would show that. I wouldn't show that I'd do that off stream, but since you guys were curious, we'll walk through it now. Real quick, some kind of a typing test. <clears throat> Let me take one of these first. Yeah, the edge, this color does look good, actually. Okay, so.
so bad. I felt like I made a ton of mistakes. Anyway. That was really bad. I literally have not typed in two days until we sat down for this thing, though. <laughs> I pressed uh, QWERDNF when I played LOL last night a little bit. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Max on Deck. Yeah, this board actually looks pretty good with Shoko on it and this and this lighting schema. Uh, I do wish that it had more underglow, like on the around the entire perimeter, so it glowed out the back and front. But it looks good in general. Yeah, I mean, so my top end typing for me is like 80 and bottom end is actually around here. And I've been consistently at the bottom end the last like couple months. But yeah, because <clears throat> um, I've just haven't been practicing at all. Um, and I don't type like huge blocks of text usually anyway. It's like an email and I can't think fast enough to type it um, faster anyway. Uh, I don't like the way they sound that much either, but it's not that they don't sound good for Telios, it's that they don't maybe sound that great in the in the board. Like the polycarb with the brass plate maybe just isn't as good as it could have sounded. To be honest, all I want to hear is more HBCP. Um, yeah, it's really good. It's a really good board. I will say that. That's true. But what are you going to do, right? We can't have the all HBCP channel, and then the all Kepler channel, and then the all Alps whatever channel. Yeah, dude, I'm looking forward to the Atomic Purple too. But this is pretty. Actually, this is a way better looking board with the polycarbonate than otherwise. I don't know if I like the sound as much as I like the Alu one, but I really like the look a lot more, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Um, Atomic Purple is gonna be so awesome, or whatever it's called. It's Atomic Purple, that's what it's called. Um, yeah, I agree, man. It's gonna look good. Okay, we'll move this back up here. Or it's out of the way a little bit. I don't know, what do you guys think about this board? I'm always curious to hear what other people have to say. It looks pretty good to me. Pretty fantastic, and Shoko does look great on it, but Shoko kind of looks good on almost everything. It doesn't sound bad, it just, I don't know if the brass plate in the polycarb is actually the best. I think, honestly, if I were, if I did this, if I were doing this for me, um, I would probably contact, uh, exclusive and try and get a copy of the plate file and then i would contact 159 and i would ask him if he will cut me a palm plate out of this for this or i would do like well jade's gb just concluded but i would have maybe jumped in on that and got a carbon fiber one cut in it um yeah that's kind of what i would do uh, you don't understand the appeal it received what do you mean a shoko or Oh, you mean the E65? Um, yeah, I I think there's a lot better 65% options out there, but this came out before they did, right? I mean, Chimera hasn't launched yet. Um, J01 is huge and was super limited group by right? I mean, and has that macro pad on the side. So I don't know, that doesn't really work. Uh, FC65 was an option, but what other 65s are a Bauer, I guess, but Bauer was low quantity and it was expensive. It was a great board. So like thinking about it, right? What's the, what's the better option really? If you want a 65, I mean, there's other good 65s, but this is a decent one. The white layout looks like a mug with a coil of steam. What do you mean? Wait, I'm curious. I'm confused. A mug? Oh, are you talking about like right here? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, 
people are paying 600 bucks for these, aren't they? On the after? Maybe. I mean, the aftermarket's kind of crazy right now, right? 10 strong? Like, if you think about the aftermarket, uh, I think that was out during. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right, actually. So the thing is, like, the aftermarket's crazy right now. Um, like, it, it's a really weird thing going on where the prices are outrageous sometimes. It's just like stupidly outrageous on things. Um, was that I was looking, I saw an LZ um, GHV2 or whatever, and I built one of those on my stream. They're good boards. They have that weird like foot on the bottom of them for 700 for the board. I don't know what the LZ, um, what that board sold for brand new, but it wasn't stupid, right? It wasn't as much. Like, it wasn't $700, it was maybe five. I mean, I, I don't know exactly, but it definitely wasn't seven. <clears throat> so the aftermarket is just, prices are higher, like, for the fear of missing out factor, and people are buying things so the prices stay elevated. I don't know. I don't know what, the, what to say, right? At some point, people will start manufacturing enough stuff that it'll flood out a little bit. Because the truth is, is manufacturing high-end stuff like this is accessible now. It's accessible. You can run a GB if you want to. Make cool files, find something cool, order two or three prototypes over, and that would be a lot, actually. You'd probably get away with one if you had somebody look over your files and tried to check them for stupid mistakes, but let's say you couldn't, right? Because you make a couple mistakes and you end up with like three different protos. You're gonna safe investment right now. They are a safe investment. You're not going to lose money buying one and reselling it, almost. Unless it's like a massive flop for some reason. Like that specific board, like it was just trash. It didn't come with something it was supposed to or whatever. Yeah, it, they are hot. Um, uh, Osiris, man, you type just fine. <laughs> I get what you meant. I got what you meant after a minute. Thanks for joining, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks not only for um, for hosting me, but like thanks for actually joining in and chatting. I really love it that you guys hang out. The after so last week's interview, like I had that was some of the most fun seriously that I've had on like in the keyboard hobby. And afterward, hanging out and chatting was super fucking cool, dude. I don't know if you guys know, but Osiris and Chewie are both really cool. Like, in... On, at a personal level. I mean, it's cool. They're cool on camera, but they actually just both seem like really, really cool people. Yeah, it was. It was, like, epically long. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, I gotta go to sleep, man. <laughs> it was great, though. It was. I definitely look forward to um, NorCal. Anybody else, by the way, that's in NorCal or whatever needs to hit us up. Like, I mean, I'm 100% positive that I'll meet up with those guys and have good times. Um, I know some other heads are going to be there. I'm sure Nathan will be there. I know a couple other people have mentioned it, that they'll definitely be there, and I'm looking forward to it. But, like, I definitely want to hang out and see more of the people in the community if you guys are making it to NorCal. Like, for real. I mean, otherwise, Chewie and Osiris and me and my buddy and Shox, who's in here probably because he's going with me, will all probably get together and I guess maybe they can convince me that Parks and Rec and, uh, well, Parks and Rec's okay, but they can convince me that The Office is totally worth watching. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I wish I could. You'll be at KeyCon. Jeff, I'm planning on going if it's in if it's in Vegas, it's almost impossible for me to miss it. Like it's three and a half hours from me to Vegas. Uh, four maybe. Yeah, no Yeah, BBB. I mean it's it's good. It's worth watching. What I mean is is I, if you watched the interview, I watched like the first three episodes of The Office. And I couldn't stand it. I was like, I hate this character. I hate him. Steve Carell's character. I was like, I hate him. I don't want to watch this show anymore. 
It's a thing. Couldn't stand it. But, I mean, everyone tells me that it's way better after, so I'll, I'll be down. Yeah, no, 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 that's... I need to watch it. Sure, you're supposed to hate him, but you're supposed to love hating him. And I didn't love hating him, I just hated him. Um, yeah, that's what that's what everybody says. So I probably just need to watch more of it and get over it. <laughs> I'm sure I'll like it. Because everybody else seemed ridiculously funny. Um... Parks and Rec is like a 7.5, Office is probably an 8, okay. Where do you put the League? Because I put the League above literally all of these shows, both of these shows from what I've seen. I'm like, I would rather rewatch the League. Um, yeah, um, so, just the keyboards, oof. So Denver, Denver is confirmed. When is Denver, Mex? Uh, I don't remember when Denver is. Because I'm going to have to, um, I might have to re-examine my plans next year. Or is Denver like December or something? Okay, I got to look. I got to look. Oh my god. Oh my ah I'm dumb. Oh, it's in Denver. Oh That's actually perfect. United Hub there, right? It's easy. Easy peasy. Okay, and then the date is When is the date? I don't know, I actually feel like I would prefer Vegas because we could go party real hard if we wanted to or find something silly to do or like just go shoot automatic weapons or something, I don't know. <laughs> at keyboard, at shitty old keyboards? No, they probably wouldn't let you do that. <laughs> um, uh, there are episodes of The League that are amazing. I rewatch it. It's always in bursts for storylines and let's say 8.0. Fair, it's good. Bojack Horseman. Bojack's funny. I, I don't know, man. Like, if we're gonna go into, like, just best shows, the comedies aren't there. I don't know. What about Archer, right? Archer's amazing. I hear everybody talk about Bob's Burgers. Like, oh my god, so good. And I'm like, Archer's just better. IMO. Freaks and Geeks around 9.5? Are you joking? Okay. I need to watch Freaks and Geeks, apparently. I've never seen it. Yeah, Archer is just like... Oof. Wow. Total difference of opinion there. I think it's really amazing, too. For cartoon comedy, I think it pretty much takes the cake. Um, yeah, I mean, whatever, man. Like, there's a lot of good shows out there. Some of the... I mean, the best shows, though, honestly, aren't in the comedy genre. Like... Like, they just aren't. There's some amazing dramas that exist, right? Like, they're just not as, like, repeat watchable. Like, you're just not laughing nonstop, right? Like, I mean, everybody loved Game of Thrones, right? So, like, who hated that show? Now it's finally going to matter, and it's so desensitizing. Fuck the next person. Oh, uh, yeah, Venture Brothers, so Venture Brothers was amazing. No, I've seen Venture Brothers. I've seen almost all of Venture Brothers. There's some of it that I haven't, but Venture Brothers was amazing. Supernatural is not comedy and it's amazing. So I remember being like way back when it started watching it um, a little bit, and then I never really got super into it and I fell out of it the first couple seasons or whatever but it's in like 15th season or something stupid like that right so it's hard to argue with those numbers <laughs> like if you're on for 15 seasons you're fucking good i'm sure they are one of your favorite comedies of all time <laughs> nice dude yeah i um i don't know uh i think my favorite television show of all time is probably not like 
for any given episode or maybe even at any given season classically like the best right and the production value isn't actually the highest um of any individual show but when you tie it all up together and you look at the whole storyline as a whole and all the acting throughout its entirety i think it's fucking amazing and that's the wire like wire is like number one show for me probably um and there are, are a couple episodes where there's some really ridiculously funny shit that happens. Like, look up, uh, I think it's season five, episode three, maybe? Um, look up, just look up The Wire Lie Detector or something like that. I'm sure you'll find it on YouTube. Um, fucking amazing. All right, yeah, yeah. BBB, I gotta go to, man. Pretty 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 much it's 9 30 we've been on for three hours which was a good build time we got this all done i'll wrap it up and it's a great board um and honestly i will always call out the flaws in all the boards that show up here i'm gonna recap this one just a little bit good night good night bbb um i'm gonna go over this one just a little bit the flaws of this board are these the PVD coating is not perfect. There are scratches in the PVD coating, nicks, little dimples, etc., all over its PVD coating in different places. Um, the copper board on the polycarbonate doesn't sound as good as it did in the Alu case where we built with Zelios. These Telios do not sound amazing. They sound okay. Like they're they're solid. It's a solid good thing, but it's not amazing. Um, and it's it's a consequence of the material that this is made out of and the plate material um, and the space that there is to resonate inside. Um, so there's that. Um, the PCB, both PCBs that we received for both of these two boards. So the Alu one that we had and this one, it's GMC, GMK Shoko cartoons. So both for this one and the other one had some issue. If you watch the Alu one that I built a couple weeks ago, one of the LEDs was bad. And if you watch this one, you will recall that, um, well, maybe you recall now if you watched it, but if you didn't, there's there was a diode that wasn't tacked down on one pad, so the switch wouldn't actuate, right? I had to add some solder, flow that joint, get it, get it go, get it to go. Um, how much does Shoko run for right now? Shoko is like really sought after because there wasn't a lot of them that ran. Um, so I think maybe like 300, 350 maybe. You could probably find them every now and then. Maybe more, I don't know. I'm not selling mine and mine has like shine on it because I used it on, not like a shit ton, but it has some. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not that old. <laughs> So I'm not planning on selling, so I don't know. But <laughs> they're not cheap, though. Um, yeah, the, the the QC could be better. Now the board itself feels good. There's a slight ledge right here where the bottom part of this case meets up with the top part, and it's because this material flexes out of the way a little bit to meet the plate, I think. So you you have this little like tiny little scratchy ledge right there. So that's unfortunate, right? There's, you, you feel it a little all around where it doesn't quite line up perfect, which is weird because the interior, there's like fitted parts into the case to like keep it in line on both the Alu one and this one. And it, you would guess that it would be like just better. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just, it's not as tight as, well, it's not as tight as I would want it, honestly, for six, 600 bucks maybe, 700 bucks, what, what do these go for on the aftermarket right now? 600 bucks probably, um, five, six, I don't know. For the polycarb one, probably, you know, like six, seven, somewhere in there. Um, so yeah, like frankly, not where I would want it to be. I would like to see exclusive step up their QC. Uh, on the polycarb, I can forgive the ledges and stuff like that, like I can. On the PVD brass, I can forgive actually the PVD brass. I actually believe if you're gonna be doing brass and you're gonna PVD coat it so it doesn't tarnish, fucking blast it before you before you PVD coat it. 
I want PVD coating because I want tarnish prevention, but give me a matted or blasted finish so that I don't see the PVD imperfections. Um, yeah, that's kind of rough for that. Uh, it ran though, what, 325 or more? Something like that. I don't remember, but yeah, somewhere in that ballpark. I'm not saying it's a bad board, but I do want to criticize it where its flaws and strengths are. Um, I have some other boards, right, where I criticize them and they're really high-end boards. Uh, even HBCP, I've criticized, right? Like I've said what the things that aren't amazing about it. It's an amazing board, but like there's things, right? I'm sure when I get Kepler, I'm going to have things to say about what I don't like about it, right? I know, though, that... I do know that 159 is talking about flying to China to QC the PVD before he accepts them. So, I mean, where where do you get that balance, right? Like, what amount of quality control are the people that are running this putting into it? Because people, some people are stepping that game way up, right? <laughs> like, if you buy a TGR board, there's not gonna be a lot of flaws. There just won't be, right? Um, if you buy a number one, like a key cult board, for instance, like I'm not saying the design is amazing or anything on TGR or key cult or whatever, but the QC is gonna be on point. It just will be. So, I mean, it really depends on what you're buying into, at what price point you're buying in, what your expectation is, and how they're managing your expectations. and. Exclusive doesn't manage my expectations any differently than TGR does. In fact, the polish of their group buys and interest checks for most people's boards are better, right? Than UTC's. And so, like, I would expect more out of something that looked more polished in GB phase than this, and we didn't get there. Right, this isn't beating a... Now, Key Cult's um, production value of their advertising and their stuff is really high. Also, they go out of pocket and manufacture something and then sell it afterward as a product. It's like ready to roll lately. So it's easier for them to know exactly where they're at before the GB, because there's no GB, right? So there are factors, but people need to start modifying the way that they're selling boards if they want to sell boards for a lot of money and they want us to think that they're on point. So I would not hesitate buying um, an exclusive board though. All of that being said, buying in on, at GB prices on one of these, if it was 325, 400, whatever, with uh, whatever options, I'd probably go. I'd probably do it. I would, it's a nice board. Buying in at 700, uh, not gonna happen. Not gonna happen for me. It's just how I feel about it. Right, I mean, I have Salamander, and I spent like six or seven hundred, six hundred, seven hundred, I don't know, somewhere in that ballpark for Salamander, and Salamander has more flaws than this board does. Well, it has more flaws than the Alu version of this had. Jeff, I wish that I bought Austin. I had the money set aside to do the thing, and like literally just couldn't wake up I just slept like shit a bunch that week leading up to it and slept like shit that night and then was rushed to go like get food with people and do social things the next morning like, I just woke up too late and then didn't have time to do this and so I didn't get in on Austin and I feel bummed about it I would really love one um, yeah I'll live though right maybe he'll do another run maybe I'll buy one on the secondary market Maybe somebody will decide they don't want a full-size board and they'll sell it to me for near GB plus shipping, whatever it costs. I would do it. Yeah, so, um, anyway. E6.5, beg him for his blue proto. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to, like, put somebody out, right? Like, I mean, they don't owe me anything. Like, and I, and I honestly, I don't. Drifting bunnies, like I don't, I don't know him that well or anything. I've just like briefly said hello or chatted very briefly in chat. Okay, it would, I would feel 
maybe not so great asking like hey can you do an extra one or can you you know if there were extras or there was an extra spot i would do it yeah he seems like a cool dude go check the pin he promised me oh okay well i'll look i'll look um i'll probably just contact you after this metallic charles actually why don't you contact me on discord I am you are you number seven two six four if you wouldn't mind otherwise i'll try and find you on there but i don't want you to like give your whole tag out on discord if you don't want people to know though but i don't mind people knowing mine there's also a link in the twitch right below there um oh actually there might not be anymore there isn't oh, oh i want to see the pin i want to hear what you had to say you, do you mean a pin in the actual Discord? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, pin. You said check the pin. I'm guessing you're talking about a Discord pin. Oh. Ah. Ah. Got me. I was like, dude, if there's some way of like getting in on extras or whatever, I was like, I'm down. <laughs> now, um... Anyway, I think getting in on boards like that are the best value in the industry or in the market right now. Get in on like when somebody's gonna run Austin or something like that. Somebody who hasn't done one before but clearly put a lot of time, who hasn't done like a big GB but clearly put a lot of time and effort into it, did protos, did all of that. That's your surefire. Like jump in and buy that board, right? Because that guy put a lot into it. Yeah, if if there are if there ends up being extras in a way that I can that I can do it, I will jump in on one. He, it seems like he did it right, man. From the very beginning, looking at his site, looking at what he was talking about, or the, the GeekHack post, looking at how he was planning on doing it, and then his protos going out and people looking at him and getting to take a look and say, oh yeah, this is awesome. It was done right. I think he did it right. I think Piney did it right for how he did it for what he was going for i think it went really well i think 159 did it right i think right like like people are doing it and it's and it's working out really well i think austin was a unique case even though in that subset where like you saw a lot of information about it it just looked really good dr unconscionable <laughs> thanks for following me man <laughs> i appreciate that um, <laughs> Metallic Charles, thanks for following. It's good to see you again, by the way. This PCB was Gondo, if you remember his story. Oof. Was it? Okay, I did not know. I don't remember. Cypher would be another, I'd say, did it right. Yeah. Cypher, I didn't even realize. I mean, I knew it was happening, but I didn't even read all the stuff about it and get in like before it was like... Um, another guy that I would say did it right, um, was Jay, actually, for J01. Small private, like, prototype round, right, where it was just a few people. Um, Jeff knows, but Piney did that with HBCP, right? That's how I got one. That's how he's got one now. Like, I think that was a right move, right? Um... Yeah, that's crazy making I that's right. That's crazy, dude, making PCBs while in ICU. Like don't dude. What do you mean you got lucky with the proto, dude? Like You got in on one because you were interested in it. Because you chatted with the person who was making it and you're like, hey, I hear you're making this thing. Get me one, right? So it went something like that, right? <laughs> so totally worth. Um yeah, I don't know, man. I think some people did it right. I think that boards like this, though, as cool as this board actually is, I want to see exclusive step up to where some people who are brand new are putting in a lot of effort in it. Like, literally, I want no one to ever phone in their next board to, like, we're just going to rerun that and, or do this thing, basically the same thing, and, you know? Like, unless they're literally running the exact same board, the exact same way, with the same menu, with everything. Yeah. 
True enough. Yeah. Yeah, that is really lucky, actually. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for joining in. Thanks for hanging out with me for three hours, almost three and a half hours. I appreciate it. Mechs on deck, thanks again for, for the host, man. You guys are awesome. I love it. Um, 10 strong, dude. Thanks for thanks for chatting. Thanks for coming in and having something that you wanted to chat about and unload about. I'm totally down with people talking about what's going on in the community. Shocks, man. Thanks. And uh, I'll we'll be we'll be seeing each other sometime soon at least in november if not before at least uh, and mechs on deck same same i actually have been meaning to jump in to your guys's voice chat play some games with you guys but i don't know if it's gonna happen this week because i'm gonna be out of town this weekend anyway thanks again guys take it easy until next time I'll see you guys next Wednesday, and then the one after that, I, I'm probably going to have to not be there and make that up at a different time. Later, guys.